This book was so good. This is definitely one of the best books I've read this year. This is a book, this is a TikTok book, and it really reminded me that just because you see something in a certain way doesn't mean that that's actually the way the other person is. It's just the way you've interpreted it. How to win friends and influence people. This is meant to be like a classic. <sighs> Hi everyone, it's Ian Olivia. I hope you're well welcome. In today's video, I am going to be telling you about all the books I've read in October. We've got quite a lot to get through, so we might as well get on with it. The first book I'm going to talk about though, is an audiobook. Again, shout out to Spotify. Every single book video I do, I have to shout out to Spotify because... <laughs> I get through so many more books because of their audiobooks. Anyway, the first book I listened to, The Alone Advantage, 10 behind the scenes habits that drive crazy success. This book was so good. This is definitely one of the best books I've read this year. It was very practical, very easy to understand and listen to. It was scientific, it was biblical. It was just amazing. There were so many like case studies and testimonies as well about successful people and their habits and how it's just like, it kind of reminded me of the atomic habits, but this was even better. And just how like the little day to day decisions impact the rest of your life and because it was an audio book I just kept rewinding it because I was like that was so good I need to write this down I wrote so many notes on this book literally can't fault it five star from me can't recommend it enough I've recommended it to my entire family I will definitely reread this I'm actually thinking of buying it the physical book just because I'd want to like I don't know it's the kind of book that I want to physically read highlight write more notes this was a great book a million out of ten would recommend the second book we're going to talk about but this was the first book i actually read in october feels like forever ago but anyway it's called night bloom and it's based on two cousins who are really close as kids and then for various different reasons they like go their separate ways and then when they're older they meet back up and it's very interesting and because they're family the cousins there was the whole family dynamic the first third of this book is based on one cousin's point of view and then the second part is the other cousin's point of view and then the third bit is back to the first cousins and when i got to the second bit i thought oh my god because it's literally the exact same time period from kids to like when they're older and have families and have a job and i was thinking oh my gosh are we literally just going to relive the exact same timeline because this is going to be boring but it was so interesting because you got to see the exact same situations but from both sides of you. And it really reminded me that just because you see something in a certain way doesn't mean that that's actually the way the other person is. It's just the way you've interpreted it. So many characters in here as well, where you're like, they start off and you think they're the good character. And then when you see like one of the other person's point of views, you're like, are they the villain? <laughs> I love a book with a very happy ending. Everyone's besties, they all ride off into the sunset. This one wasn't a sad ending, but it wasn't uh, like the happiest of ending so um yeah there's that but i did really enjoy this book i would give this a four star would recommend and i love the way the story was told as well and it was so interesting the different cultures because they live in ghana and then one of them moves to america so it was just interesting seeing the different ways of society and yeah four star read for me then i read check and mate this is a book this is a tiktok book i remember when i went to a bookshop earlier this year i'm pretty sure this was like on the tiktok section and it's basically a gal who quit playing chess when she was younger and she gets back into it and yeah it's just kind of it goes from there it's like a romance book um i don't know anything about chess so i found the first half of this book very interesting because the first half was all about like you didn't know why she quit when she was younger you also didn't know what happened to her dad so it was like what you know there was a lot of mystery and then there's this guy so she's the main girl and then the guy he is like a famous chess guy and there's like the whole romance side but they're like not dating so that was interesting and then in the middle of the book you kind of find out what happened to the dad you find out why she quit chess and then she starts like they kind of they don't start dating but i kind of lost interest halfway from not gonna lie i feel like we just found out everything at the same time and i was like okay what is the rest of this book about and the storyline does keep going but they did lose me in the second half i'm not gonna lie um also the end of the book i feel like it just literally the i'm pretty sure the ending of the book is like an article I thought, could, could you not have just like ripped this out? Anyway, it was okay. It was an all right book. I, I, it was okay. So it's a three star from me. If somebody asked me like, have you read a romance book this year? Then I would mention this, but I just don't think I'd recommend it. There was nothing wrong with it. It just wasn't really a bit of me. But the first half was so interesting. But then when you find out why she quit chess and her dad, you're like, okay, now what? Then I read, I love you, I love you, I love you. This book is all about a girl who is in love with her boy best friend and you know it goes from them being them meeting when they're like 
in secondary school and then them as adults and the best thing i've got from this book is that you just need to be honest because at the very beginning when she met him there were so many chances where she could have like admitted that she liked him so many chances she could have hinted even when she was talking to her girlfriends and they were all like oh you know do you fancy him she was just like no we're just friends even though she fancied him and then because of those little lies you see the rest of their friendship he becomes famous in the book as well which was okay it was kind of interesting she's not famous they kind of fall out then they become friends again towards the end of the book though like i kind of like the male character i thought he was okay but then towards the end of the book you are thinking is he the villain has he been the villain the whole time so it did keep me on my toes i actually read this book in a day and i'm glad i did because i wouldn't have wanted to waste any more time on it so yeah this is a three star from me again it was okay oh i also read this book how to win friends and influence people this is meant to be like a classic <sighs> for me personally i thought that this was just very um obvious a lot of it was very obvious i mean it's a self-help book so i did finish the book but that's probably why i finished it because it was a self-help book i just i thought it'd be more i don't know i thought i, I thought it'd give more practical tips but it didn't this book i think of, as well was originally written in like the 20s as in 1920 obviously because we're in the 20s now and i feel like at the very beginning i think it's his wife is like oh we've had to change some things because a lot of the famous people back then or the well-known people you know you're just not gonna know them now which i thought was quite interesting because i wonder who's famous and well-known now that in like 50 years time no one's gonna know i don't know but anyway yeah a lot of it was just like you know when you're talking to someone they're more interested in what they want to say so listen to them which i think is just obvious a lot of it was about manners as well again i just thought it was quite obvious there were some good gems but yeah one of the worst things about this book for me was how many testimony slash stories were in here don't get me wrong i love i love a story the audio book i listened to I loved the stories in that but for me this it would be like a page that's explaining the point and then there'd be like five different stories just to back it up which I get it was given essay vibes GCSE essay point quote discuss and a lot of the examples I just didn't even I didn't even get like I, I don't understand I don't know the oil industry for example so as I'm reading this I'm getting lost yeah it just wasn't for me there are some good gems in here I can't think of any off the top of my head but um for me <sighs> I think I'm going to give this a two star purely because I really had to force myself to finish this. Would I recommend this? Personally, no. If someone says, oh, I am reading it, I wouldn't tell them to stop. But if someone's like, should I read it? I wouldn't tell them to read it personally. I would tell them to Google summary of this book and then just read that. But yeah, it was okay. It was okay. I finished it. That's why it's a two star. Then I read this book called One Summer. I've still got the bookmark in it. I got to page 123. I was on chapter 32. This book, FYI, is all about a girl who, oh, let me read the blurb, she moves back to where she used to live to start over and then she meets this guy and sparks fly. I'm on page 123 on chapter 32 and I've yet to meet the guy. <laughs> this whole part of the book is her living in London and finding out that her boyfriend, spoiler alert, has cheated on her. And this girl is just so annoying. At work, she just doesn't put the effort in. She's basically going to get fired and she's just not even trying to keep the job, which is quite annoying. Then she finds out her boyfriend cheats on her and then her phone starts ringing and she like, it's like, oh, maybe I'll take him back. What? No, I, I just couldn't, I couldn't finish it. It was very chatty patty. And when I was reading this book, I was on the train. And you know, as soon as you start reading it, you're like, oh, I don't want to read this book, but I've still got an hour's journey to go and the way home. So I soldiered through, but yeah, I couldn't do any more. Also, I felt like the chapters would just stop abruptly. And then the next chapter would just pick up from where it had left off. And I just thought, I don't think this needs to be two separate chapters. It could just be one. One star from me, didn't finish it. Took me ages just to get to the guy. I mean, I think the guy in that last chapter was the main guy. I don't know. We didn't know his name. Wouldn't recommend. Wouldn't reread. I think if it's like if I was on a holiday, or not me, but if you're on holiday and you want like a cute little rom-com, maybe this is your vibe. But yeah, I didn't finish it, so okay then i read the world knows his name now hear her story oh no that's not what the book's called then i read the instrumentalist <sighs> this book was uh it starts like it reminds me of like an english essay like an english language essay this is literally the opening sentence dusk and the marangona bell tolls oh, i just venice 1695 i thought okay again i was on the train i thought i've committed now um the way it describes do you know what this reminds me of i think a book i read last month where it's given things personification it's talking about the, the chimes lick the cockles of the mud drenched canal 
I thought, what is this? This was the first um, paragraph. But then it goes on and basically there's a woman who's a prostitute and she falls pregnant and then she gives the baby up and she puts the baby in like a little hole in the wall and then she goes to the baby goes to live with the nuns. So after that first paragraph, I was really hooked. I was like, oh my gosh, this is such an interesting story. And then the little girl, when she's eight, one of the teachers is like, you know, one of the best musicians in Rome, Venice, Italy, wherever they are, Venice. And um, he's like tutoring her, but it kind of reminded me a bit of, you know, like when the main character is really good at what they want to do, but they're just so passionate, like they're willing to sacrifice their friendships and everything. And I just think it's not that deep. <laughs> so yeah, it's kind of like that. Also with the teacher and the student relationship, I don't know, I just, I didn't like it. I just feel like he kept taking her ideas, I mean, which is kind of part of the story. She's trying to become like the most famous person in the world as a musician and, I mean, I read this book in a day as well and um, again, I'm glad I didn't waste any more time. Looking back on it, I kind of wish I stopped reading this book. Nothing like sinister happens, but when I was reading it, I did just feel a bit, I don't know. The teacher just annoyed me and the main character there's a couple of times when she like literally leaves her friends on like death's door and i thought it's it's just not that deep i wouldn't reread this i wouldn't recommend it's a two star for me i finished it but yeah it's just not my cup of tea and then the final book honey this book is all about a girl who's trying to become famous um back in the 90s so i thought this would be quite interesting um she it starts off with her like in a girl band with for three other random girls. Then one of them's like, we're not gonna make it, I'm going solo and she becomes really famous. And then she's like, okay, I wanna kind of go solo as well. And then the other friend, the one who left the band first, she's kind of publicly seeing this guy, but they're not really seeing each other. It's just like a showman's thing. Then this girl, she starts dating him, even though she knows that the friend, it's a showman's thing, but she just doesn't tell the friend like, oh, I actually do like him. Quite annoying. Um, I didn't finish this book either. I got, I mean, I did get halfway through. But yeah, she just, I just feel like nothing was really happening. She kind of irritated me, the guy irritated me, even the friend irritated me, although her storyline was way more interesting. Yeah, I wasn't a fan. And then because I got halfway through, I was like, oh, I can't be bothered. I feel like, do I keep powering through or do I just quit? So then I went on Goodreads. This is what I'm gonna start doing from now on. Went on Goodreads and all, literally the majority of the reviews were like, nothing happens in this book. You never actually see her get to be famous. And from then I thought, I'm done with this book. So yeah, I didn't finish it. It was okay. Wouldn't recommend, wouldn't reread. Um, it's a one star from me. Yeah, she was just a bit of an ag. I'm just editing this and I forgot to say, one of the most annoying things about this main character was how desperate she was to be famous, that she was literally, it's like she had no morals. I don't think she did. Um, and in one of the scenes, one of her friends, like the girl who left the band first, she's like, oh, we did a photo shoot and she felt really uncomfortable with what they asked her to do. And then the main character to herself was like, oh, you know, if they asked me to do that, I'd have done whatever. It's just not that deep. But yeah, she she was an egg. Oh my gosh, I've just remembered. Another thing is sometimes there'd be like newspaper articles, songs in there. I don't want to read that, okay? Just please stick to the story. <laughs> so yeah, a few books this month that I didn't finish, these three all one star from me. I was really disappointed with this one as well. I did think it'd be way better, but you know, at least I gave it a read. But yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Um, thank God my battery didn't die because when I started filming, it was on 5% and I thought, please, let's just keep it going. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and hopefully I'll see you in my next one. Bye.